This is the Boletta from Fred Olsen Cruise Lines. I recently joined a nine-day trip on the Boletta from Newcastle to Northern Norway on a winter Northern Lights hunt. Frequent followers of this channel will know I took a similar Northern Lights cruise just a few months ago with Fred Olsen on the Boletta's sister ship, the Borealis. I made a ship tour video of the Borealis, but even though they are sister ships and therefore very similar, there are some subtle differences. I know some of you who may be considering a trip to Norway on the Boletta want to see the Boletta and not a ship that is almost the Boletta, so this is the video for you. I'll also throw in a few hints and tips about winter cruising in Norway along the way, including the best places on the ship to see those elusive northern lights. Both the Borealis and Boletta are new to the Fred Olsen fleet, but they are not new ships. Fred Olsen recently bought the ships from Holland America Line, where the Boletta was called the Amsterdam. It took its maiden voyage in the year 2000, so what would it be like cruising on a 23-year-old vessel? Come on board and I'll show you around, including the opportunity to meet these rather warm bears. I'll start with the most important factor on any ship, the cabins. My cabin 3429 was at the back of deck 3 and had a restricted view onto the promenade. While you do feel the movement more at the front and back of the ship, I was just steps away from access to the outside promenade on deck 3, which was a big bonus for me. For those choosing cabins, this is an example of an ocean view cabin, one of the more basic classes of cabin on board, but more than comfortable for me. I was taking the journey on my own, but I think with two people in this cabin there would still be plenty of space. The bathroom is a good size for a cruise ship and I never had any problem with water. I drank the water from the bathroom tap every day and it was absolutely fine. A few details about the cabin, the TV only functions once you've watched the safety video. There are TV channels, movies, and probably my favourite channel to watch, the Bridge Camera. You can also check your onboard account on the television. In the cabin there is a mini fridge, a small kettle with tea and coffee replenished daily, and UK, EU and USB power points, albeit only on the desk and not by the beds. It's one of the disadvantages of sailing on an old ship, but honestly it was never really an issue for me. To get a feel for some of the other cabins on board, check out my Borealis ship tour where I looked at several other cabin grades, including balcony cabins and suites. They are very similar to what's available on the Boletta. By my cabin was one of the self-serve laundry and ironing rooms. But if you prefer, there is a housekeeping service for laundry, dry cleaning and ironing too. So to the rest of the ship. The ship has 10 main decks and they are named as well as numbered to help you remember where you're going. Decks 1 through 3 are mainly guest cabins, although deck 3 is where you'll find the covered promenade that allows you to walk a complete circuit of the ship. Three and a half laps is approximately one mile, and there were organised walk a mile walks at 8am on sea days, but I saw people getting in their steps throughout the day around this deck. While not the best place for Northern Lights hunting or stargazing because of the lights on the deck, it was terrific for scenic cruising, especially as we approached northern ports. Inside you'll find the bottom of the three level atrium. This is where you really start to understand how well this ship has been looked after. Covering decks three to five, the atrium is built around this wonderful clock tower that's quite different from the one on the Borealis. Make sure you take at least one walk around the spiral staircase to admire this wonderful centerpiece from every angle. The atrium area hosts guest services, the excursion desk, the future cruise desk, and also a flower shop. Decks four and five are really the beating heart of the ship, as it's here you'll find the Neptune Lounge Theatre, the main restaurants, and many of the shops, bars, and lounges. The Neptune Lounge on deck four hosted many lectures and all the evening shows. It's also used as the meetup point for most excursions. And usually for a cruise ship, there is no bar in the theatre, but table service is always offered before and during the evening shows, and this works surprisingly well even on busy nights. My preferred spot for evening shows is either at the very front or up on the balcony, which you access from deck five. At the other end of decks four and five, you'll find the Bloomsbury and Terrace restaurants spread over two levels. This is the location of the five course evening meals, which are offered as a fixed dining concept over two sittings, 
usually at a quarter past six and half past eight. The evening shows are then time to follow each dinner sitting. The restaurant is also open for table service, breakfast and table service lunch. While there are other places to eat on the ship for dinner if you prefer, more on these later. There are a lot of bars and lounges to explore in the spaces between the theatre and the restaurants on decks 4 and 5. Starting with deck 4, there is the auditorium. This is a flexible space for just over 100 people to watch cookery demonstrations, film screenings and smaller talks, usually during the afternoon. Sometimes it's also used, along with the main theatre, as a meeting point for excursions. Deck 4 is also home to one of the specialty restaurant's colours and tastes. I didn't eat here on the Boletta, but I did on the Borealis, so here's a quick taste of what to expect at this Asian fusion restaurant. It does come at an extra charge, but personally I think it's well worth it. Deck 5 is the lounge deck, and it's here you'll find many of the most comfortable bars and lounges. Much of the space is taken up by the Morning Light pub and lounge. It's styled as a homely pub and serves as the main lounge on the ship. It played host to quizzes, bingo and other games throughout the trip, while live music was on offer during the extremely popular pre-dinner times. I should say that I deliberately chose quiet times to film, but this cruise was actually the busiest the Boletta had ever been since becoming a Fred Olsen ship. Despite this, I was always able to find a quiet spot. I think the busiest times, apart from just before dinner, were, as you can see, when the crew were able to set up a live screening of a Newcastle United football game and a Six Nations rugby match during a sea day. Other bars on Deck 5 include the Ocean Bar, popular for pre-show drinks given its proximity to the Neptune Lounge, but also a place where onboard games would take place, such as Bago and indoor curling. Also, there was the stylish piano bar, popular later in the evening. The Bookmark Cafe serves premium coffees and tea at an additional charge, together with chocolates and cakes. Tea and coffee was always free from the buffet restaurant, but Bookmark always did a good trade in lattes and the like. Table service was offered from Bookmark in the Bookmark lounge and library area where you could borrow books. This seemed to be open around the clock and this lovely garden themed lounge with gardening books available to borrow and lovely ocean views. Adjacent to this garden room, the Oriental Tea Room was an elegant spot that held occasional tea tastings. I found it one of the more relaxing and quiet places on the ship throughout the cruise. Finally, regular bridge teaching sessions and competitions took place in the card room. As with the Borealis, decks 6 and 7 on the Boletta are mostly premium balcony cabins and suites, but there was this wonderful outside space at the front of deck 6. Because it's directly below the bridge, it is the darkest spot on the ship when at sea, and that means it's perfect when there is aurora activity overhead. It is, however, quite exposed and therefore one of the coldest and windiest spots too. Deck 8 is the Lido deck, and as with many other cruise ships, it's here you'll find the swimming area and buffet restaurant. The swimming pool was used much more than I had expected, although it was heated, as were the popular hot tubs. The poolside cafe is a hidden gem on the ship. I never actually ate here on the Borealis, but on the Boletta, I ate several meals here and they were absolutely fantastic. I can recommend the burger and the marinated tuna. Really, really good. This area has a retractable roof, so it will look completely different on a summer cruise. Because of the very cold temperatures and the heated water, this area was quite often steamy, especially in the evening. And I always enjoyed walking through this deck when it looked like this. And the bears always seemed to be enjoying themselves too. The buffet restaurant known as The View is where I ate most of my meals. It's open for breakfast, lunch, afternoon tea, dinner, and a late night supper club with tea and coffee always available. The buffet is a mix of self-service and served items, some cooked on demand, such as eggs at breakfast or stir fries at lunch and dinner. Crew were usually on hand to seat you so you didn't have to worry about finding somewhere to sit. The busiest times were on port days right before excursions began, but even on those days I didn't have to wait more than a minute or two for a seat. In one corner of the buffet restaurant you'll find the other specialty restaurant, Vasco. This specialises in Goan cuisine 
and you need to go here hungry because the portions are big. Behind the buffet is this aft outdoor deck with a smoking area, a bar, and the somewhat optimistic deck chairs surrounding the heated pool. The Borealis had a garden area here, so this pool is one of the biggest differences on the Boletta, and in my mind, an improvement. Despite the cold temperatures, this heated pool was used surprisingly often, especially early in the morning. This is one of the best spots on the ship for scenic cruising, especially as a bar, the buffet, and the tea and coffee stations are just a few steps away. The spa and fitness centre occupies the front end of deck 8. I only had time for a brief look here as I got a haircut on the first sea day. If you are interested in the other facilities, check out the Borealis video where I take a much more in-depth look around the spa. Also watch out for spa offers on port days as prices tend to be much lower. Deck 9 is known as the sports deck, although on a winter cruise this becomes a spot really just for scenic cruising and northern lights hunting. It was often windy up here, but it was well worth the time spent out in the cold as we got some of our best sightings of the lights from here. That's especially true when the crew turned out the lights when a sighting was particularly good. This helped a great deal. The big downside of coming out here was the slippy conditions at night. Now the crew were doing their best to grit the deck and clear away slush, but you still had to take care out here at night. This is a large outdoor area. During the daytime, this was also a great spot to see the Arctic landscapes that we were sailing past and especially the sunrise in the morning. At the front of deck nine, you'll find the observatory, which wraps around the front, providing a wonderful daytime view of the scenery. There was dancing here in the daytime, live music in the evenings, and it also served as the ship's late night venue for those who wanted to party, including karaoke and silent disco events. The art studio is a little hidden away at the other end of deck nine, just above the buffet. In this quiet room, there is plenty of space for taking part in the various arts and crafts classes offered on the cruise. Last but definitely not least is the sun deck on deck 10, accessible via stairs from deck 9. This was the venue for stargazing sessions and once again we enjoyed seeing the northern lights from up here. The deck was sometimes closed due to the slippy conditions underfoot, especially when the stairs were slippy, but when it was open it was a terrific dark spot to see the northern lights. I hope you enjoyed this quick tour of the Fred Olsen Boletta. I've got several other videos related to winter cruising in Norway, including a Northern Lights Hunt video and a tour of the Boletta's sister ship, the Borealis, so check those out if you are interested. Thanks for watching.